The oldest railway in Australia was opened in Melbourne in September 1854. This ran from Flinders Street Station to Port Melbourne, then called Sandridge. Soon afterwards, a second railway opened to St Kilda in 1856. These continued to operate for many years, but in the 1980s, when many public transport services were cut across Victoria, both of these short railways fell victim to the program. This was largely the result of the Loney Report. Published in 1979, it recommended huge cuts to public transport. Instead, it pushed for the further expansion and subsidy of roads, cars and trucks. Among many other things, it recommended permanently closing down all trams and trains to St Kilda and Port Melbourne and replacing them with buses. This was originally planned to take place in 1981, but due to protests and community backlash, instead the state government announced that both train lines would still have trains removed, but would now be replaced by trams instead of buses. It became part of a wider rebranding of Melbourne's public transport network in an effort to increase patronage. One part of this plan was ordering new modern B-class trams. The first two, called B1s, were built as prototypes specifically for the Port Melbourne and St Kilda railway lines. The whole thing was branded as Light Rail Transit, or LRT for short. The newly formed Metropolitan Transit Authority, also known as the Met, also ordered 132 new B-class trams as part of this transformation, which for a short time were known as Light Rail Vehicles, or LRVs. These ended up being used on the former St Kilda and Port Melbourne lines when they were converted to light rail in 1987 and became an early iconic symbol of the Met and Melbourne's rebranded public transport. At the time, as we mentioned before, there was a lot of opposition to this closure of the heavy rail lines to Port Melbourne and St Kilda. The main council area affected, the City of South Melbourne, was heavily involved in some of these protests. In 1991, together with the City of Melbourne and a group of consultants, they published a report called the Southern Public Transport Feasibility Study. In it, they put forward a proposal to improve the light rail service that had now been in place for a few years. This was to connect the St Kilda and Port Melbourne light rail with the Route 70 tram via Flinders Street Station to create a continuous route. This was proposed to be done by repurposing the now disused rail bridge across the Yarra River and the former platform at Flinders Street Station. From Port Junction at Clarendon Street heading towards the city, trams would instead continue along the former rail alignment and cross the Yarra River on the Sandridge Rail Bridge. They would then stop within Flinders Street Station itself at the platform formerly used by the St Kilda and Port Melbourne trains. New tracks would then be built connecting to the existing tram tracks on Batman Avenue. The total cost estimate range for this was $8 million to $15.5 million, or about $17 to $32 million today, accounting for inflation. This was to be integrated with several major developments proposed at the time. The main ones were the redevelopment of the Yarra Bank Highway and former industrial areas into what we today know as South Bank, and a proposed development of Flinders Street Station called Festival Marketplace. If you're interested in learning more, Moo Transit has a great video covering this topic, which I've linked to here in the description. But basically, this was to partially demolish and rebuild the station with an entertainment precinct, bars, restaurants and a shopping centre, but it never went ahead. The report goes into quite a lot of detail on the new light rail route and presents several options. From what I can see, the two main parts of this project were what would have happened at Flinders Street Station and the actual operation of the tram lines, so let's dig into those a little bit more. As you can see in these diagrams, the light rail would use the existing Platform 11 within the station itself at the eastern end. However, if this was done today, it would not actually be possible, because Platform 11 is now a restaurant and bar, which was actually originally proposed as part of Festival Marketplace. The alternative proposal to get around this issue was to build a new light rail stop at the west end of Platforms 10 and 11 instead, just next to the pedestrian underpass to Flinders Street. But because of the other changes proposed as part of Festival Marketplace, trams would not be able to continue through to Batman Avenue and would be forced to terminate here. Still, both options would have provided a direct interchange to trains. How the light rail would integrate into the rest of the tram network was another aspect that had a couple of different options. The report didn't actually recommend any specific one because it needed more analysis, 
Plus, a lot would depend on how the light rail would integrate into Flinders Street Station itself. Option 1 had trams running all the way through from Batman Avenue to St Kilda and a shuttle service operating to Port Melbourne through the CBD. Option 2 would have a shuttle running from Flinders Street to St Kilda and trams running all the way through to East Brunswick. Option 3 would have swapped the line so that Batman Avenue trams would run to Port Melbourne and East Brunswick trams to St Kilda, while Option 4 would have had both lines operate to both destinations alternatively. There were many other options and details canvassed in the report, which I have linked in the description if you're interested. In any case, the big advantages sold by the study would have been a faster and better service for passengers trying to get into the city, especially for people interchanging onto other tram and train services. I haven't been able to find much information at all on how this was received, but it seems that following the cancellation or indefinite postponement of the many projects mentioned in the report, such as Festival Marketplace, any momentum that the light rail extension would have had was lost and the project did not go ahead. Interestingly though, part of this proposal was technically built as part of a separate project. When the Exhibition Street extension was built in 1999, the tram tracks that were formerly along Batman Avenue were rerouted onto a dedicated tramway running adjacent to the Jollymont rail yards. This was similar to how the light rail would have entered Flinders Street Station from the east in the Southern Public Transport Link. There are still lots of questions about whether this plan would have been practical or even desirable. As the study found, there would have been many significant barriers to achieving this. Nevertheless, it's always interesting to go through reports like this and imagine what might have been. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more, please subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date on future videos. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.